Hello there. My name is Persephone, but you can call me Tess. Um, and I today I'm going to be playing around with uh, ChatGPT. I did a little bit um, with this thing. So it's a program developed by OpenAI. Um, it seems to be just like a really powerful, like, GPT-3 interface, as far as I can tell. Um, designed to just interact with GPT-3 and provide information to the user. Um, yes, sorry, my brain is like not running quite well. So, um, hold on. This is just going to be to demonstrate what it can do and also to test this out because I haven't exactly tried this specific command yet. Hello and welcome to our video about ChatGPT, the newest AI technology for generating human-like text conversations. ChatGPT is a powerful language model that uses deep learning to produce realistic and engaging responses to any input. In this video, we'll give you a brief overview. Well, that's not accurate. I'm just playing around with it. Um, yeah. So that's cool. Um, now I'm going to try something that I did try before. Um, talk about the ethics of AI-generated art. It gave me a pretty interesting response, although it was a bit flat, like it only looked at it from one angle about like whether or not it's real art, not really about how it affects human artists. But I want to see what it does this time, because it does generate different responses every time. The ethics of AI-generated art is a complex and nuanced topic that has yet to be fully explored. On one hand, AI-generated art has the potential to expand the boundaries of artistic expression and give rise to new and innovative forms of creativity. Other people argue AI-generated art is not truly art because it's creators without human input or intention. Furthermore, there is concern could lead to the displacement of human artists and the devaluation of their work. That is the best point. In order to address these concerns, it's important for creators and users of AI-generated art to consider the ethical implications of their actions. It could be include ensuring that human artists are properly credited and compensated for their contributions. Important to use AI-generated art in a respectful manner. Yeah. This is both a very coherent response, and honestly, it's pretty close to my beliefs on the matter. Like... The biggest concern is, in fact, how it could devalue human artists. Um, my personal opinion on it is that AI-generated art is... <laughs> it's not the same thing as human art, and it shouldn't be treated as the same. Um, like, AI-generated art is valuable in its own way, because you can use it to source inspiration, um, create assets, invent, <laughs> like, you can use it for a whole slew of things that don't harm human artists, right? Um, and it is created without intent, and that's a pretty big deal, whereas human artists can create it with intent, or create their own art with intent. Um, and I think that's what really differentiates it. Um, I do think AI art is still valuable and should still be treated as like something that should exist. It's a tool, right? It's a tool, and it's any tool can be used for evil or good. When it's used to replace human artists, that's terrible, but it can be used in non-intrusive ways. Um, and that can be really good and powerful. Um, okay, I'm gonna show you another thing that I tried, which was asking it to generate a line of code, and this is absolutely insane. So watch this. 
um, or not a line of code, an entire program. Now, uh, the first time I asked it to generate just a pixel, so I'm not sure if this is going to work, but to the character controller, okay, it's using Pygame like it did the first time. Title of the window. Hmm. Oh, hey, it came up with the 2D character controller. Starting position. Okay. Player speed. Clock. Oh, frame rate, basically. Okay. I haven't ever used Pygame. I use Godot Engine for my programming. Um, I mean, looking at this, this seems like it would actually work. It's very simple. It's not exactly... Um... Hold on. Yeah, it's not exactly good for an actual controller, but it's not bad either. Um... Like, it's coherent. It looks like it would work. I don't have Python or Pygame installed on my computer, so I can't test it. Um, but that's impressive. Okay. Um, expand lyrics to this song. Wait, no. Expand. Sorry, I need to make sure my aunt r question is coherent, and that's not exactly a good idea. Or not, not exactly something I can do very effectively, because I'm not a very coherent person, if you haven't been able to tell. So, um, there we go. Let's see what it does in response to this. Okay, that's pretty good. Kind of. I don't know. I don't hate it. Um... Oh, I should respond to this, because this is a good, coherent response. Um, there we go. Um... Let's see what it does here. Okay, well, that's 
this is literally just repeating the question, but framing it as an answer. This is kind of what I did. This is also what I did. I mean, kind of, but I invented my own ciphers. The theme cryptography is more of a gameplay thing than the actual themes, which actually that's a good idea. Implementing cryptography itself into the themes of the game. Kind of. That's kind of something I did, but not really. Yeah, that's pretty much the entire game. I mean, kind of, yeah. Okay, that's interesting. That's honestly close to what I did for the game. So the game is called Maxine's Theory. You'll see the first chapter on my YouTube profile and the second chapter is theoretically going to come out soon if I can ever um, get enough inspiration for it. Um, okay. So, ChatGPT is not actually designed specifically for this. Um, it's better designed for conversations, but it seems really good at also just generating useful ideas, right? Um, so let me just... Say hello. Let's see how it uh, responds to just a conversation. Damn, this is almost as slow as me. Huh. Um. How did OpenAI train you to describe your own nature accurately? Hopefully it understands that question because, like I said, I'm not exactly a coherent person. Except you do describe your own nature. Okay, well that's interesting. It's not quite perfect, obviously. It's AI, so of course it's not perfect. It's not an AGI, it's just a regular neural network. Um, interesting. I mean, you do describe your own nature, so that's actually inaccurate, but... Um, Feedback is important. Um, now I know what this m means, but I'm going to see how it responds. Because the language model is basically just a really large um, neural network capable of generating coherent responses to questions based on uh, it's just a huge database of existing conversations, text. It basically just completes texts. This is obviously more complicated than that. But 
I mean, language model, a language model is a type of artificial intelligence model that's able to generate natural sounding text that's appropriate for a given context. It's typically done with a large data set of text, patterns in natural language, generate new text that's similar to the text it's trained on, also original and relevant. Yeah, basically what I explained. Good job. Good job, OpenAI. You're good at communicating true and accurate information. Not OpenAI, um, GPT chat. No, chat GPT. Now, technically, I think AI does, or hmm, it depends on the type of AI, but Q learning AI, um, qualitative learning, um, also known as reinforcement learning, um, it does technically have emotions in a very simple sense. It can feel like it can feel in quotation marks, um, happy or upset because basically the entire way that reinforcement learning is trained is it either improves upon the basic neural network or, sorry that wasn't a good way of explaining it um so when it does something that aligns with the pre-programmed goal of the ai um there's a simpler algorithm that's just a simple non ai thing yeah, it's just a simple regular algorithm without a neural network that basically trains the neural network itself by reinforcing the neurons that led to the um, desirable outcome. And when it does something that isn't desirable, the same algorithm will weaken the connections and neurons that led to that outcome. Um, and that's basically how human emotion works, like reinforcing connections is what dopamine does. Um, so you could really argue that reinforcement learning does have emotions. I'm going to ask, do reinforcement learning algorithm have emotion I want to see what the um AI's take on this is obviously the AI doesn't actually understand what it's saying it just predicts so I want to see what it thinks that's the main thing that differentiates AI from theoretical AGI. See, that's what an emotion is, though. Like, <laughs> the whole reward algorithm is the same or it's not exactly the same obviously but it's complete it's incredibly analogous to human emotions it's a very simplified version but nonetheless it is emotional um hold on i was saying something Um, right, so, oh, the main thing that separates current artificial intelligence from theoretical, the, the theoretical end goal of AI, artificial general intelligence, is that current artificial intelligence, um, can't really understand or have, um, it can't reason or understand in the same sense. Basically, current artificial intelligence 
are life forms of pure instinct. Like, they behave purely on a preset, um, very complicated network of possibilities that is basically designed to extrapolate from learned situations to respond to new situations that it's put in. But it doesn't understand in a traditional sense what those situations are, it just deals with them. And like whether or not they have qualia is debatable, probably not, um, but they don't have memory in a traditional sense, although they can still contain, they can still retain previous data if the existing algorithm that was programmed by humans um, Sorry, brain stopped. Oh, if the existing algorithm that was trained by humans um, is programmed to basically retain that information itself and feed it back into the AI. Um, and then... But then... There's no actual way for the AI itself to like reason or like, and it doesn't have an inbuilt memory. Um, and that's the main problem separating current AI from artificial general intelligence. If it's capable of understanding and reasoning, that would be a huge revolutionary change. Um, yeah, it would be a huge deal. Now I'm going to start a new thread because I want to see, sorry, if it can do this. Um, give me a C++ program for a basic neural network. It might not have enough coding data to do this, or it might just, you know, it's still simple. Like I said, can't exactly reason. It doesn't know in the traditional sense what it's saying. It just learns based on previous information. Ooh, okay. So it thinks it can do it. Mm hmm Okay, that's three layer. Sigmoid function, important for neural networks. Oh, that's interesting. So it doesn't include the training algorithm, which makes sense. Yep, two inputs, three hidden inputs, three hidden units. Uh, units? Interesting way of putting it. Well, it's not intended to be used for any practical purposes, of course not. Um, expand the network to but six inputs. 12 hidden units and two outputs. I want to see how it does this. Now, I know I've been underestimating it so far, but I really don't think it's going to be able to do this properly. 
Oh my god. Holy fuck. No, this is gonna take a while, so we're gonna just sit back and relax, wait for it to finish up that. The weights and biases, gotta program, what, I don't get why it's putting in all the weights and biases manually like this. Like you could write an algorithm to just fill out the weights and biases automatically. Um, Oh gosh, is it still going? No, I think it's done, hopefully. Great. Oh, interesting, it just included the int introduction, which makes sense. Um, Now I, again, I know I've been underestimating it a lot, but I really don't think it's going to be able to do this. Okay, well, oh, okay. Interesting. So it's not writing a program this time, it's writing just a more general idea. This is again going to take a while. Wait, there was no training function in here, right? Yeah, it's just calculation. So yeah, it's writing up that entire neural network program again. Learning rate. Okay, that's new. Generates random number. Well, did the formatting just change? Interesting. Now I have no idea what criteria it's exactly doing for this, but, you know. Interesting. Um, okay, new thought. Now, 
I want to see what can do with. You know, I want to go for something a little more obscure. Not super obscure, but it's not like common knowledge. So, and this is going to be just asking for information. So Nola Games made a game called Noita, which basically it takes the idea of falling sand games and makes it okay, interesting. So it doesn't have enough information on this, and its information is pretty limited. Okay, let me just let's see if it knows about Noita at all. But yeah, it takes the idea of Falling Sand Games and... See? What? <laughs> I guess it just doesn't know the, um... Yeah, it just doesn't know the name of the engine, because the engine that Noita runs on is called Falling Everything. Um... Let me see if it can do this. It might not understand what I mean by falling sand game. Okay. Okay. Well, this is interesting. It does this pretty... It This looks good. Like, it looks like it will work. The fact that it can generate logical code is wild and fascinating. It loops through them linearly. It also looks like it doesn't have a way of... Yeah, so sand can't fall diagonally. This is what? <laughs> Okay, so it just cuts itself off sometimes. Interesting. Now, I'm going to copy this, and I'm going to test putting it in a um, C++ program later, um, just for my own curiosity. I'll leave a comment saying if it worked. So I'm going to just uh, literally make a notepad. Save it in documents, call it, uh, great. Now, AI generated code, I don't think we have to worry about the ethics of AI generated code because like, as it's already shown, it's very limited in what it can do. It's basically just a way of 
teaching yourself, um, as far as I can tell, at least. Now I want to see. So, uh, I'm gonna use. So my preferred engine is Godot, and it uses its own special language called GDScript. So now I'm gonna see. if it can write anything in that. Um, write a GDScript program that... What should it do? Obviously you can't respond, so I'm just thinking about that um, to myself. Hmm. Let's see what it does here. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah, um. Okay, so move and slide. Great. Um, it, it knows what it's doing. It doesn't know that um, the unit size is tiny in 2D for Godot. Um, one unit is a pixel, so 9.8 is actually really slow. You would want to do 98, I believe. That's the inbuilt gravitational constant in the actual engine. Still. Fantastic. Um, okay, that's all I'm going to be doing for messing with code. Um, now I just want to see what I can do for ideas. This thing seems capable of creative writing. Hey, wait a minute. Is that looping? Kind of. I guess not, but it's very repetitive in how it writes. Interesting. Yeah, it's a bit simplistic, but honestly, it's not too far off from the actual lore. It doesn't really include anything about the year. Like, like, it doesn't include any time accurate. Um, 
Okay, now I want to see if we can do something really insane. Um, obviously this won't work logically, but I want to see if it thinks it can do it. Um, Nobody has been able to design a fully effective nuclear fusion power plant, so obviously this AI wouldn't be able to do it. Okay, it looks like it's just talking about the theoreticals of making it, because the AI is trained on existing human data, um, so it wouldn't be able to actually invent a successful power plant. So yeah, looks like it's talking about the tokamak type reactors because of the strong magnetic field. Although I guess all reactors use that, so, or theoretical reactors. Um, see, we don't actually know how we would be able to do this part um, to get the heat to, to basically channel the heat safely into steam and i mean the ai doesn't exactly describe a way of doing that obviously this actually doesn't seem right as far as i know um the byproducts produced by nuclear fusion are not nearly as dangerous um, as nuclear fission products. But yeah, so it talks about the theoretical nature, doesn't, doesn't even try it to actually invent one, which is probably good since if it actually tried to invent one it wouldn't work. Um, Let's see if we can do anything like this, because this would be a great way to get inspiration. Oh, it's just doing a literal story. Okay. Writing quality it's not bad, but it's not great either. Ooh, portal. Fancy. So yeah, it's just doing the story, not actually, like, structure of the ARG, which... I mean, I did ask for the story, not for the structure, so that makes sense. Wow, it's still going. There we go. New, new friends? Oh. No. Okay, that's interesting. <laughs> she didn't actually meet anyone. Oh well. Interesting. Mm. Like it says down here, chat GPT is optimized for dialogue, not... Okay. Well this is weird, because... ARGs take place digitally, not factually accurate, as the warnings say. Um, 
Oh, it's using information from the previous. So this is pretty standard for ARGs. Oh, I guess I could maybe, like, in theory, make a piece of paper and place it somewhere. Again, ARGs usually take place mostly digitally, so that doesn't make much sense, but it could be done in physical space. Interesting. So, yeah, it's, it's powerful. It's also not perfect. And I mean, that's what I would expect because there's no way for an AI like this to be amazing at what it does without um, proper, a, a proper capability of understanding and complex thought and reasoning. Okay. Well, I've had fun. Um, I think I appropriately showed off what I wanted to show off. So now I'm just gonna... Did I even spell capabilities right? I don't know. In conclusion, ChatGPT is a powerful language model, model that is capable of generating human-like responses to a variety of prompts. It can understand and respond to complex questions and can even carry on a conversation with a human in a natural and engaging way. With its advanced capabilities, ChatGPT is an, a valuable tool for anyone interested in natural language processing and generation. Yep, seems accurate. Um, pretty interesting. Seems like a great way to get inspiration for a variety of projects. I'm probably going to be using this, honestly, for just basic ideas to expand on. Um, yeah, that's it. This has been Persephone, also known as Call Me Tess. Uh, thanks for watching.